Good morning, folks. As we watch a gorgeous plasma filament dance on the departing limb of the north, we've got some exciting updates today, and I'm hoping to get you another special video tonight. But right now, let's hit spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star. We're quiet. The same is true at Earth. Geomagnetic conditions are calm as the solar wind steadies into ambient quiet range, and the active regions on the north are beginning to depart. This was a serious uptick in sunspot production, even if they're still not making big flares. Largest production of spots so far this cycle. Let's head over to Seismicity, where the most interesting quake of the day was not only not the largest in magnitude, but it sparks very little to do with seismicity in the mind of an observer. Folks, we've expected seismic upticks when the Beaufort Gyre finally reverses, unleashing the cold climate bomb on the world. One shake is not a swarm or an uptick, but I'm now full eyes open to the Beaufort Sea. Hearts go out to Nashville and surrounding areas pounded by these floods. Sadly, there is more coming to the area tonight, which you'll see in the wind map shots at the end. Aesthetic piece today comes from Alma, highly focused on the radio production from Baby Star Jets. It wasn't long ago in a special video when we went over the importance of those jets, from stars to galaxies to rare cosmological events inside Muscovite mica crystals. Here, it's the baby stars with fully grown cries. Folks, the ESA has a new piece out about shorelines. It's the same story we get with sea level rise, you know, not equal everywhere, some areas seeing sea level reduction. Here, it's a nod to that with the shoreline accumulation and erosion points, which always exist and are fairly interspersed. Folks, this next one is really just an Easter egg for veteran observers. Here, they're trying to work through their confusion about why we could have had such hemispheric asymmetry in the ionosphere during the strong geomagnetic storms of 2017. Veteran observers, you'll recall both the magnitude 8 earthquake and hurricane outbreak in the north, directly underneath the part of Earth facing the sun when it unleashed its flares. And hopefully, you also recall that quakes and hurricanes are major global electric circuit workers, and so they darn well should have altered the ceiling of that circuit, the ionosphere. Very interesting story up next about the astronomical awareness of ancient civilizations. This is as excellent a discovery as all the others you've heard about in this field. Now, if only they'd realize this isn't even close to the first civilization in the Americas, that'd be great. Last but not least, folks, they have spotted a new auroral form on Jupiter. Folks, while this expanding concentric auroral signature is new to our viewing, it may not be entirely new. Without Juno's latest technology, we might never have seen this, and so it might have always been on Jupiter. Or maybe it is actually new and is a result of Jupiter beginning the next phase of its electromagnetic shift. This was the same basic question we had with the recent story about its polar stratospheric vortex going the opposite way from what we see on Earth. Yes, we are always looking for these planetary changes, but we can't know for sure if these winds or those new auroral ring features are actually new. But from that uncertainty to a bit of certainty with the next special video we've got on deck for you, again, hopefully tonight, if not, tomorrow night, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.